job to, to continue, so that's why I am here today. Very well. I would like to stop you because my colleague has signaled me that for some reason we have technical problems. Ah. <clears throat> okay, I think that we solved it, so just let's continue. So, thank you very much, Paul, for the introduction. And I'm turning to our next guest, Mr. Adam Bardos. Uh, hi, everyone, I'm Adam Bardos, and I'm the co founder and CEO of iMotion Drive. About my personal background, I was graduated as uh, an automotive engineer in 2010 and, uh, and spent 10 years uh, in the industry. Uh, I was a part of the advanced engineering team of Norbrems R&D Center here in Budapest. Um, as, it, as its name suggests, uh, mm, I had the opportunity to work on various pre-development and in innovative projects in the, in the automotive industry. And parallel, I started my, my PhD here, here at BME. Uh, and Roughly eight years ago, I also made an MBA here for for widening uh, my knowledge in, in in the in the economics and entrepreneurial area. Uh, and uh, we started uh, a specific research in uh, two, uh, 2019. Uh, focusing on uh, automated driving, especially on vehicle motion control and, uh, and motion planning at handling limits, uh, which gives the basis uh, of, of iMotion Drive, but I, I will, uh, I will uh, quite tell about it later. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction, and then to me to the last but not least guest, Mr. Riti, Mr. Ando Riti. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Andre, I'm 23 years old, so I'm probably the youngest here, and uh, I'm nice here as the co-founder of Free Spray Solutions, that is a Hungarian startup that uh, has developed the world's first spray deodorant refill solution, that consists of a refill station that we install into drugstores and supermarkets, mm -hmm. and also a refillable spray can that the customers uh, can refill with the help of our machine. Uh, we have started our first pilot project with Josman Hungary uh, back in, in January 2023 and, uh, and we have seen incredible results so far, so we will see uh, how this, this whole story goes. From my personal background, uh, I'm uh, still studying at BME as a mechanical engineer. I still have uh, the, my thesis left, <laughs> or the second part of my thesis left. And uh, basically, I'm I'm handling the product development in the company. I have no previous background in working anywhere else, so this is my first job <laughs> as a as a professional. But uh, uh, um, it's a very interesting uh, journey so far. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, just to understand the project, you are refilling. Any kind of can or, or special the deodorant? Or what can we imagine about that? So what, what is the can that you refill? The, the difference between our can and the regular can is only in its inner workings because traditional spray deodorants work with propane butane propellants mm -hmm. that are extremely flammable and therefore cannot be refilled inside the retail environment. Because when, when they fill these kind of products, traditional spray deodorants inside factories, for the filling of this propellant, the, the, the cans go out into a separate room that's, that's outside of the building because that's such a hazardous uh, activity. Mm -hmm. And then they come back for, for checking. And of course, we cannot do that inside, inside a, a Rossman store, for example. Th that is why our uh, technology uses compressed air as a propellant. That is, mm -hmm. of course, very inert and has no... Uh, such uh, attributes, that is why we can actually do the refill process inside the, inside the stores. And also our, uh, our cans have a, 
has a unique identification barcode mm -hmm. that lets us track our cans so we can make sure that our station only starts the refill process if a correct can is inserted that is our can and also we, we can impose a maximum number of refills on the cans therefore we can eliminate the risk of, of amortization with this. Okay, thank you very much. Um, if I'm correct, we talked earlier that on the scale of technology readiness level, where do you judge yourself or the, well, I would say whether the company and the products like well, yourself in literal. I do not know the exact levels, uh, to be honest, but as we talked uh, earlier, we are we, our station is now operating in its uh, intended operational environment, so it's it's uh, working in a pilot project with Rossmann Hungary. So I, I, I would say that so it's 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 in the store and, and customers custom customers are already using it with, yeah. without our, our help and without our monitoring actually. So yeah. uh, I would say it's it's around six or seven or so. Right, we are right before scale now. Okay, that's very interesting. And you, Pa, uh, what, what is your project? Can you tell us yes. a little bit more about that? So, so our, our product will be a head-up display. It's, it's, a head this up is display, the, yeah. the kind of display that uh, uh, are already appearing in, in luxury cars, projecting images on, on the windscreen. And our goal is to, to provide the widest field of view head-up display that exists, that will exist in two, three years uh, in, in cars. One purpose is, uh, is to provide uh, driver assistance, mm -hmm. so augmented reality, let's say if, if the visibility is bad, to mark the dangers and the risks, and uh, even uh, and traffic situ situation. The direction of the road. The direction on the road or the exit of the, of the roundabout, okay. uh, etc. Uh, and uh, later on, when autonomous vehicles become common, this could be used for a general purpose infotainment system. So, watching movies or working on, on okay. the windscreen, which is a huge surface. Uh, and use. you are already incorporated, or in which, which, in which level yes. do you judge your project? So, we, we are in a baby uh, state. We, state. Have, we have founded the company in August. And uh, so recently, it's half a year, yeah. and it's. I, I also have a half a year granddaughter, and oh I goodness. must say that uh, children are developing much faster than companies, at least for, for <laughs> us. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so, uh, so the 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 company is there. Our technical technical readiness level is, I can tell you exactly, 4.5 because we have passed 4 and we have not reached yet uh, 5. So uh, so we are at the proof of principle experiment which is working. Mm -hmm. We would like to, to demonstrate this in a kind of relevant uh, environment which will be a simulator, but obviously our goal is to go to the uh, real operating uh, environment, which in our case will be a little bit different because it will be a, a kind of a built in in a car uh, which could be used at least on a test mm -hmm. track or test. So, track. if I understand correctly, you are on a verge of terminating or finishing the research part, and now you are jumping yes. into yes. the field development. Yes, that's it. Yeah, so the the most intriguing and most interesting development stage, if I may say so. Yeah, I would say it's challenging. It's challenging, yeah. yeah. I, I would come back to you, I really would like to listen to, to some of your struggles or some of your learnings up till now the journey, but I would like to ask Adam to say also a few words about his project. I was on drive with a an automated collision avoidance software provider that, that helps automakers uh, to design safer cars uh, and enable a higher level of safety compliance by automatically handling the car at its physical limits. So the problem itself are the accidents and are the road accidents and um, 
more precisely the, the loss of control, the, um, the driver's loss of control uh, during such a situation and, and the improper decision making and the improper handling of the car uh, during such an, a road accident. Because mm -hmm. in, a, in a road accident you have only a limited time available for, for decision making uh, and, and for acting. Uh, and for, for a human being it's, it's almost impossible mm -hmm. uh, to do it uh, in the right way. Uh, so we, we are solving this problem. And, and of course parallel uh, it's, a, it's a constant challenge for, for um, automakers and vehicle manufacturers to comply with uh, tasks like uh, Euro and CAP uh, safety tests. So, um, uh, we, want, we want to uh, provide solutions that mm -hmm. comply also uh, with such a test. So, if I know correctly, you were one of the two first spin-offs of the university. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> despite the fact that this is a true sentence, what, where do you judge yourself and your products on the technology business level? Basically, we. Uh, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, our, our spin-off and startup company is based on a, on a university research uh, that we made uh, from uh, 2019 with my, uh, my colleagues. Um, so cur currently, we have the technology itself, the algorithms, and, and uh, some proof of concept demonstrations uh, on the test track with real car. Mm -hmm. So I, I would I would think it's it's, it's a more technology ready as well. Um, somewhere five or, 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 or six. Six-ish. Six-ish. <laughs> yeah. uh, so of course, the next steps uh, are involved in the, the product development uh, itself. Okay. Uh, it's, it's most intriguing because you have three very different projects with three very different backgrounds. I mean, not only you with your background, but the team that you are managing. And uh, I think that the most valuable session, or the most valuable part in this conversation is if uh, you could tell the listeners uh, what was the biggest learning until now in your journey. I don't know, I know it's a, it's a tricky question because you need to, to state your facts and appear naked, but it's really, uh, the purpose of this talk is really to encourage uh, other people to follow your paths or your steps, and by sharing the experience is one of the most important trigger points for people to join or to abandon this kind of entrepreneurial life. So, of course I'm not asking to reveal all your secrets and all your failures, but if you have uh, some point which you can identify as a big learning point and you think that that will be useful for uh, other people, then I'm more than glad to, to, to listen to it. But actually, my, I think my biggest learning didn't come from a, from a, a negative experience or a failure, rather of a, a, not, a yeah. positive experience. We, we have started uh, this, this, this company or project with, with uh, my high school best friend, Sergio, and uh, from a father and, and from other uh, examples, it, it, I, I thought it, it's, it's, it, that it's a great risk to start a business with, with, with a friend, and uh, because it can really get nasty when, when uh, the, the, com the, the company as situations that are very difficult, uh, but it has been a very good experience so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, what I would uh, recommend to my future self and my uh, uh, younger self is that uh, we, you, we, you should definitely get into uh, a business with someone you, who you can totally trust and who you are friends with, because then all the work days will be will be much more fun and. And uh, it's very important to not to be alone in, in, a, in a company or, or even when you are really starting the company and, and developing a project because it's, it's, it's really not fun alone. And uh, 
there are situations when one of you is down and there, there's always another who can get you up and it's always changing who, who is the one who is down at the moment and, and if you are together in this then you can really go forward even wow. if, if there are like, difficulties. That's quite, quite intriguing <laughs> and enjoying. Uh, it's really interesting and thank you very much for sharing with the audience your your learning points and you're absolutely right there are not only negative points which you which you can learn about but really positive ones and I am glad that you approach it from that way. May I ask you Paul what's your learning point till now? Yeah uh, one note before this is that it's funny that I also have a schoolmate uh, in my company uh, from secondary school wow. who, who is a businessman so so I, I share the thoughts uh, uh, that, that you mentioned that it's, it's good to have friends and confidence uh, with each other and uh, I, I think uh, for me the biggest learning was that uh, up to now I have always uh, started projects in, in which I had uh, more or less 90% success rate. So I, when I decided that I have wow. my diploma or doctoral degree or something, it was always straightforward. And, uh, and this is a kind of much higher risk uh, business and it's fascinating and extremely challenging to, to be in a business where uh, it's not 90% success rate, but 90% failure rate if you consider the, the startup uh, world. And really, uh, almost every week there is a point where we could fail or we could stop and still uh, we, we have to go on and, and, and that's a new, I think that's a new uh, way of thinking for me compared to academic and... Uh, I, I believe that the experience that you're describing can be translated into the startup world saying which concludes in fail fast, succeed faster. Yeah. That's that's very really nice to hear that you're experiencing it. Thank you. Adam, mm -hmm. what's your <coughs> takeaway? What's your learning? I, I want to connect to your, to your experience because I also agree that uh, the that life of an entrepreneur is always a roller coaster. So you have to have something. Uh, and that that helps you uh, when, when you are low and one thing could be the co-founders uh, as you mentioned that uh, another thing could be your determination you have to love uh, what, what you are doing and and the impact on the world that that you want to achieve so i think uh, to survive this roller coaster is, is another <laughs> uh, secret ingredient uh, in the life of an entrepreneur you, and you have a method to 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 survive this roller coaster effect? Um, I, I, I maybe uh, maybe I have uh, this this determination. I think this the, the thing the, the yeah. thing that you love uh, this thing deep deep inside. So, so your, pas your passion your passion your passion your yeah. passion is helping you to getting through. Is that really for all of you that you should have the passion to do it? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Also, I, I try to believe that all the difficulties which come uh, are there for challenging us and to, to improve the, and, and strengthen our, uh, our team and our project. I so see. If, if, if you stop at the first difficulty, then you are done. And uh, if, you, if you believe this, then with, with this difficulty, if you, overrun, over, if you are over it, then, then you are strong, stronger than before. Isn't it not the same way like you raise the children? Yeah. That you're always, well, you don't know that, I hope, but I don't yeah. know. <laughs> you seem to be a young guy, so I, I assume that you have experience in Canada. Yeah, yeah. pretty much, yeah. I, I have two startups of my own. The, the, my first born child is already 21 year old, and the second one is 13, so I often compare these experience what you were describing with raising children. That's, <laughs> Absolutely, roller coaster effect <laughs> on, on, on the hardest way, but it's also important what you said about it. 
if you are reaching a point when you can overcome the difficulties, the hurdles, it becomes a little bit familiar with yourself. So it's not scary anymore, but you need to get there. Yeah. And that's for this, yeah, the, the, only, the only thing that drives you is the passion and, and believing it's what you are doing. How important is in your in your day-to-day operation? Are you really focused on these learnings? This is something that you have a mantra that each day that you are waking up and and I should be passionate, I should be <laughs> determined to go on. And how, how is how does it look like in the in the day-to-day operation of your life to to lead in this project? For it. For for me, there is no mantra. I think it's it, it, it should come from inside. Okay. So uh, one thing which is which is good, I think, for me, is is uh, uh, to to free your your brain, your mind from the everyday uh, routine and from the everyday problems for for a short while mm-hmm. at least. So uh, for me, I, I have the best ideas when I'm showering or or exercising or something which, sure. which uh, uh, so when you don't have to work okay. you, you simply do something automatically and then your brain is freed up okay that's interesting thank you very much and you on that I, I don't have a mantra either because I, I don't need one yet because so far I think the, the, the excitement of always uh, facing th- something new <laughs> challenge has given me enough drive to, mm-hmm. to always get up and, and be excited about today's work. Well, actually, nowadays I'm starting to realize that we, we, are, we have just entered a few months ago a, a new product development period, so we are now designing a new refill station. Mm-hmm. And it's so exciting that every, every evening when I'm, I'm going home, I'm just waiting to get back here <laughs> and oh see how we can proceed further the next day. So no mantra yet, but I, I'm sure there will be periods when, when we will meet one. So it's mm-hmm. almost like you are addicted to your product. It's I think we are more addicted to to this to this lifestyle because okay. it's I think we are in a very special place that we have the chance to, to work on our project uh, at such a, a young age with, with so uh, so uh, small constraints, so we have a really free hand in what we do every day, and and we can really do what we want. And and what we want is 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 actually to scale this project. So it's it's very good that our purposes are, are aligned with with, uh, with our job mm-hmm. and our passions as well. So I'm sure we will need some some kind of mantra later on because I, I'm I'm sure that we are facing much uh, harder situations than we are. In right now, uh, we we had a very tough one year of of, uh, of fundraising. That that was a bit tough, but uh, luckily that was just uh, uh, in the same time as, as as our pilot project. So so the, the the ups of the pilot project could really help with the downs of the fundraising. That was <laughs> that's of course op- uh, always challenging for a startup. Mm-hmm. So we have been very lucky so far. Is it something that also bothering the other two projects, the funding part? How easy it is to to have fund the research project? Yeah, we are also in a, in a fundraising, uh, so so it's, it's yeah. Uh, but but if if I'm correct, both of your projects were originally funded uh, by research in the in the university. Yes. Exactly. So, so the research was originally funded by our research grants and and by the, by the university itself. But now we have to uh, fund a uh, product development and an MVP develop, development. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a completely different task and, and gives different challenges. And so, in the first stages of technology readiness level, if you are calculating it from the TRL 1 until the TRL 5, 6, where your projects are, you say that it can be founded by the research financement of the universities, but now when you want to go to the market, you need to have a change in 
your in your direction. Is that true? Is that correct? What I'm saying? Yeah, we feel that. You feel that. We feel that. Yeah, because yeah, I'm convinced <laughs> that that and the case. Because it's always a question about raising for a startup raising funds. It's always difficult. At, at least it not come as easy as uh, some may think. But what are the biggest challenges in terms of raising funds for such high praised uh, university research like yours? Do you think that it's easy to go to, to talk on negotiations, to find the right investor? Or, 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 or is there something that you are about to, to, to learn by yourself? Because you both mentioned that you know, now you enjoyed the, the environment of the university. So all the struggles were within a controlled environment, which we call university, but now you need to step out on the market. How, how big of a challenge is it for you? It's a mindset changing thing, or, or you adapt yourself, or is it like we talked about earlier that you need to go because there is nobody else to do it? So which, which, which is your experience? Yeah, I think there are many points that, that indicate that. But the first is speed. As, as you told you, you have to fail fast or succeed even faster. Yeah. The, the university project speed is not fast enough for, for going to the market. So in, in our own business, for example, there are uh, co there is a competition from, from the Far East or from Europe or from the US who are working with, with a lot, lot of uh, financial support and many people mm -hmm. to reach more or less the same goals that, that mm -hmm. we uh, would like to achieve. So we really have to, to speed it up. We do not have five years to, to go to the market. We have to go there fast. So okay. that's, that's one thing. I think the other thing is also the, the way of thinking that we are, from now on, we are uh, focusing on a on a product in which uh, we we are not anymore interested in publications or or new new knowledge or things like that. We have to focus on on that very thing to to go there. Mm -hmm. Not mentioning bureaucracy and things like that. that we we always do. Hopefully okay. not not so much in the startup than in, in the university. And. Is there anybody in the team who has experience from the market or you are just jumping in and learning by doing? Yeah, bo both. I think uh, we, we have, I, I mentioned Tomasz, who, who is my classmate from secondary school. He's a businessman, so mm -hmm. he's a high level uh, so he uh, business guy, but not in startup environment. So okay. he knows much better about business than, than ourselves, but, but still not uh, proficient of, of how to make a spin off and the startup and the new product. I see. And you and then, and your team? In, in case of a deep tech startup like iMotion Drive, the, most of the problem is caused that uh, uh, we cannot make it from bootstrapping the development of an MVP. It's a considerable uh, funding, mm. and until we don't have the MVP itself, we cannot generate the revenue. So okay. uh, yeah. it's it's a basic problem uh, from from VCs' point of view because they always want to see the traction, uh, which which means basically the revenue mm -hmm. traction, <clears throat> and uh, or or. or we cannot be, uh, be successful uh, with all the, the funding because because it's uh, inherently a, a deep tech I see. Uh, story. So I, I think that you already answered my next question, which would be that uh, what would be the next milestone, the next stage uh, on your journey. But in your case, I guess the answer is the fastest way to find to raise money. Of course, this is this is the. The first part of, of our problem to raise money, and of course the other part is to to find uh, paying customers, uh, oh, yeah. first, uh, or at least uh, find uh, 
pre-development projects uh, to to survive uh, <clears throat> to the point uh, where we can we can generate a considerable mm -hmm. revenue. So maybe somebody who is listening to this talk will have an interest and please contact Adam. <laughs> and, and me too. <laughs> and, also. and of course, I guess for the international development, Andor will be also very happy to answer your interest in both. Okay, guys, uh, I'm triggered to ask the question about uh, things that if you would go back in time, what would you tell your younger self? Shall he begin this path? How would you like to encourage him, or shall he or she do anything else? So, what would be the message for your younger self? I would absolutely do it again. I think. Yeah. Uh, I think I, I wouldn't say um, to change something because the the, the journey has been very uh, enjoyable so far. So. I think one learning that we, we might change if we, we went back is that uh, we should we should really uh, get more uh, colleagues and even more uh, like co-founders in the very beginning because you can really really go much faster if there are multiple uh, people working on a, on a specific project. So mm -hmm. we were re re we really worked uh, on it only the two of us for the first. Almost, almost two years or one and a half years, and that's when we started to to really work with with, with other people, and that's when uh, the things get much faster. So I think you shouldn't be afraid to share the cake with with, with many other people mm -hmm. because the, the cake will be much bigger and your slice will, will be much bigger as well. Therefore, thank you. You guys, Ada. I agree with, uh, with you, Andor, and I wouldn't change anything in in, in my <coughs> past uh, last years because, of course, you have to have this experience uh, to mm. to improve yourself and learn uh, what you have to learn. So you cannot avoid these these faults and and experiences. So. In, in some cases, sports can be can be really beneficial uh, to learn. And what would you say? How would you encourage your younger self? Mm. I, I would say that that persistence is is, is really uh, okay. what matters. That's okay. really important. Thank you very much. Bob? Yeah, I I would join uh, the two gentlemen, but as as I am certainly the, uh, the oldest of, of all of us, I, I would start it earlier. So I, I, I completely <laughs> agree that if you, if you start your challenge at the age of 20 or even, even before, uh, you, you have much more time and you have much more uh, uh, flexibility to do your, your job. And uh, a good example, I have uh, uh, learned snowboarding at the age of 50 together with my daughters and uh, it was much much easier for them to, to learn than for me so obviously you you can start a kind of innovation and in company and startup world at the age of 50 but i think it's much better to so i would say to myself why start earlier why not starting earlier yeah. and what about the experience that you have gathered until you get 50 yeah, it's, it's very not, good. It's so the idea would would be to get the experience uh, of, of year 25 old. years at the age of 20. Oh, but yeah. That's that that you cannot do. But uh, I think uh, I, I think, I think that, you can learn. That's why the startup challenge to build a company that provides you the experience of 50 years at the age of 25. So that's. <laughs> I think that if you go that way, you might be also going to inventing the time travel machine. Yeah, yeah, that's that's another startup. <laughs> that's another startup. Okay, gentlemen, uh, I'm really glad that you could join uh, this talk today. Uh, I don't know if you have anything else that you would like to share with the audience. I'm offering you this few minutes if you have some more to say. If not, 
then this was the innovation talk about this really interesting project from the BMA University. I'm more than glad to know you all, to meet you all, and we're thrilled. And I'm looking forward to your success in the future and wish you all the best and all the luck that you can have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.